Hello artists. I'm so excited that today we're going to be looking at the artist Henri Matisse and we're going to be doing our own version of one of his famous pieces called The Goldfish. So let's learn a little bit about Matisse and his life and then we'll get right to our art. Henri Matisse was born in a small village in France in 1869. His family had a general store and his parents wanted him to take over the family business, but he decided he wanted to become a lawyer. So when he was 17, he went to Paris to study law. When he was 18, he passed the bar and he went to work in a law office. But at 19, he had appendicitis. And after the operation, he was recovering in bed for several days. So his mom brought him a set of paints to keep him busy and to help him pass the time. Well, the paints turned out to be a wonderful gift because he felt like painting was a kind of paradise. So he decided to give up his law career and become an artist. He went to art school in Paris and he painted in a traditional style until the year 1897. A friend of his introduced him to Impressionism and Vincent van Gogh's artwork that year and after that his artwork changed completely. And you can see at the top here he's, the uh, colors are very muted and it uh, looks very traditional. but. At the bottom right, you see a little brighter colors. You can see the brush strokes, which the Impressionists were famous for showing their brush strokes. So you can see that his artwork is changing. In 1905, Matisse joined a group of artists who expressed their emotions with wild, unnatural colors. An art critic came to one of their showings, and he said, these guys are wild beasts. He called them les fauves. And at first, that was an insult. That was meant to be an insult. And it was difficult for Matisse to make a living as, an, as a painter for a while after that um, critique came out. But, um, but now, people really love this style. Look at the fun colors, especially the woman with a hat on the left is a very famous work of his. Look at all those beautiful bright colors all around her and even all over her face. Matisse loved to travel. And while he was visiting Morocco, he enjoyed seeing goldfish on tables in many of the cafes. He also admired the brightly colored patterned fabrics. And this inspired him to include both of those in many of his works. In 1904, Matisse met Pablo Picasso, and the two became lifelong friends and rivals. Both artists liked to paint still lives and women. And here, you can see at the top, there's a painting called Still Life with Oranges. This is one that I saw when I was at the Picasso Museum in Paris a few years ago. And this was actually part of Picasso's collection. He loved Matisse's work, and he had some of Matisse's work in his home, and this is one that was from his home. The one at the bottom is called Odalesque Blue Harmony, and this one is a painting that sold at auction for $33 million in 2007. Here are some more of Matisse's beautiful paintings. Um, one of my favorites is the one in the bottom left that you can see it's called Odalesque in Red Trousers, another Odalesque piece. And I was so excited to get to see that one at the Musée de l'Orangerie in Paris. As an old man, Matisse was confined to a wheelchair. From his wheelchair and even from his bed, he found that he could enjoy creating collages with paper cutouts. 
He painted huge pieces of paper and used scissors to cut out fun shapes for his large and magnificent collages. He called this painting with scissors. Now, one of the last huge projects that he did was to um, create a beautiful chapel for a nun. She was actually a nurse that helped to nurse him back to health after an operation when he was uh, first confined to, to his wheelchair. And um, he was able to design this beautiful chapel window that you see here. It's called the Tree of Life. And on the right, you see a vestment that he also designed. And um, this was worn by the priests at the chapel that he designed. Here's another of the windows for that chapel. Matisse wanted his artwork to give people a nice, relaxed, and happy feeling. He said that his art was an art that could be a soothing, calming influence on the mind. Something like a good armchair that provides relaxation from fatigue. So we're going to do our own version of this beautiful Matisse work called The Goldfish from 1912. Now it's time to gather your supplies. You can pause the video if you need to, but you'll need a piece of paper and you can use any paper or the back of something if you don't have um, any clean paper around. And you'll need a pencil to draw your sketch and you'll need something to add color. You could use markers, crayons, colored pencils, oil pastels, paints, whatever you have is fine because it looks great with any of those. So gather those and then I'll, I'll meet you back here. Now it's time for us to get started on our sketch. And so what we're gonna do first is we're going to sketch out exactly what we want our drawing to look like, like these. I've got two sketches here. Um, and we're, we're gonna be finishing up with some fun bright colors like one of these examples here. So first of all, you can get a piece of paper, any size works. Or you might want to get a piece of paper and fold it in half. I like to um, make cards out of some of my artwork, like this. Here's one that I um, colored and then got it folded over so I can just add a, a message inside to give someone a card. So <clears throat> you can decide what you want to do there. But first of all, we're going to be drawing this shape right in the middle. This is a cylinder. A cylinder is, um, is round at the top and it's straight on the sides, it's round at the bottom. It's got two parallel lines on each side and it's got an oval or an ellipse at the top and at the bottom. So, let's get started by first drawing two parallel lines And at the top, we'll draw an ellipse that touches the parallel line on each side. Then at the bottom, I'm going to just draw a smile down here to connect that. And then just a, a hint of the back of that ellipse up inside there. It doesn't have to be perfect. Always sketch lightly so you can easily erase and you can fix anything if you don't like exactly the way you drew it the first time. And then I'm going to draw another ellipse just below the top. That's going to be the top of my water inside. Just like that. Next, I'm going to add another ellipse or oval which will become my table. goes right around the back of that cylinder. And then I'm going to go ahead and add some 
legs to my table. Now, I want my table to be symmetrical, so I'm just going to add, you can add any shape legs. You see what um, Matisse added here, but I'm just this time going to add something more like this. Just kind of a curved line, pretty much symmetrical. And kind of something like that. And then you can just see um, underneath the table, you can see the end of the leg right in the middle there on the other side. And that'll, we'll shade that in later because that's in the shadows underneath the table. Now I'm ready to add my fish inside my tank. And the fish can be any way you want them to be. Pretty much, you know, uh, goldfish are pretty much an, an oval with a triangle or V-shaped tape uh, tail. That. And you can add three or four fish however you want to. The way Matisse did it, he added three fish and then he has another little fish swimming underneath this fish right here. I'm just going to add the little head of the fish and then his tail coming off the back here. Those are overlapping so you can't see all of that fish. Overlapping is nice in artwork to show space. Now we've already showed space which is one of our elements of art here where the the cylinder is covering up the back of the table. That shows that the the back of the table is behind the cylinder and we can see that this fish is behind um, the fish that's swimming right above it. And if you want to you can add a little eye for each of your fish just for fun. You can see both of this fish's eyes there. Then notice at the top of Matisse's artwork you can see a kind of a reflection or refraction of these same fish. So you can go straight up here and this these aren't extra fish up here. These are just it's the way the light bends when it hits water. And these are not as detailed on, in this part here. And just add something like that. A suggestion of those fish, that reflection up there. Alright, and then uh, you know, Matisse loved patterns, and we can look um, at Matisse's work or this one that I did, and you can see the patterns on the wall behind. You can see also that he loved to have plants in his studio. He actually painted the goldfish from, um, from watching a goldfish bowl that he had in his studio. And he also had lots of patterned cloth that he had gathered when he visited North Africa, especially Morocco. And um, he had that up in his studio. And uh, so this is all a beautiful scene from a corner of his studio. So let's add some fun um, leaf shapes and some patterns. I'm going to start with some leaves right up here. And you can use any shape you want. Football shape is kind of fun. Um, this is more like a teardrop shape with a point on one end and a curve on the other side. Just have some fun with it and have some fun leaves. Now you might have some overlapping leaves where the, here's one that's just kind of coming off the um, coming out from behind this one here. Again, that shows space, right? You might want to have one like this that comes out as well, showing space and is overlapping behind that. Then uh, we can move over to the other side and we might have some heart-shaped leaves. These are really fun heart-shaped leaves on this side. And you can have heart shapes going this way and that way. And again, I might have an overlap here, with a heart shape that goes out that way, and then over there. If you want to, you can add some, some uh, stems that come down 
to Matisse's flower pots down underneath here. And more stems there. All right, then on the table, there are also some plants here with different shaped leaves. So I'm going to add my own leaves coming here just for fun. And then I might have just the top of the, of the uh, plant vase there. Just show a hint of that underneath the curved edge over here. All right. Then I want to show that um, there is a difference between where the wall is and where the ground is or the the uh, floor. So this is kind of like the horizon line in a landscape painting or. Um, sketch. We're going to put a line here to show where the floor stops and where the wall starts. So I'm just going to put that right back here. I'm going to jump over and then come across here. And that's where my floor is. So I'll know that I want to have my floor here and my wall de design and decoration there. So for my wall design, um, I may just add some fun flower designs like this one or this one but you can do whatever you like you know on Matisse's artwork he also had um, just kind of a polka dot design on one side and some flowers on the other so have some fun with it and decide what you want to do I'm gonna put maybe I'll put a few polka dots and then maybe a flower. I have some polka dots and then every now and then an, a flower, just for fun. Matisse had all kinds of different designs. Some of them were floral with flowers on them and others were not. Others were just some um, other fun decorative pieces. And these are behind these leaves, so if I go behind, where I can't um, go on top of my leaves, right? I need to remember some things can peek out from behind the leaves like that. All right, so I think I'm just about done with my sketch, and um, I hope you're happy with yours. And now we're ready to add some color. I've got some colored pencils and some crayons here today. Now you can use whatever you like to add color, but I'm going to start with some fun bright colors, and I'm going to add some colors that will give my artwork good contrast. Now notice that um, here I've put purple and yellow beside each other. Now purple and yellow are fun colors because they are actually called complementary colors. Complementary colors are the colors that are across from each other on the color wheel. So if we look at the color wheel here, we can look straight across from each other and purple and yellow are complementary. And also, um, you can see that there's some, um, some red and green, and red and green also are straight across from each other on the color wheel. Those are also complementary colors. So complementary colors look, work really well together. Also, um, another way that we can combine colors is by putting warm colors next to cool colors. 
Now, the warm colors are the colors that you think about when you think about a warm, sunny day at the beach, like yellow, orange, and red. And if I put warm colors next to cool colors, that's another great contrast that'll really make my colors pop. Now, here are the cool colors. The cool colors are green, blue, and violet. They're colors you think about when you think about the cool green grass, or the cool blue water. So you can use um, cool colors next to warm colors like you see here. Here's uh, orange next to green. Remember orange was one of our warm colors over here and green is over here on the cool side. So those are not complementary but they look really nice together and they make each other pop because we're, we've got warm colors beside cool colors. So you can start thinking about what colors you want to use for your flowers or polka dots or your fish and your, uh, the water around your fish. There are a lot of different ways you can uh, finish it out with color. You don't have to choose to use the, um, the colors that Matisse used or the colors that I'm using here. You can use your imagination and do your own thing. Have fun with it. In this one I use some blue and orange. Blue and orange are um, actually complementary, right? Blue and orange are right across from each other on the color wheel. So those also are, look good together in the, in the um, fish bowl. So let's get going on colors and have some fun with our colors. I'm going to, I'm going to start with um, using a little yellow in my background. Now if I use, if I color some yellow um, back here I can just go right across and I can fill in a good bit of yellow here and just start with light bright colors and work from light to dark a lot of times that's fun and so if I fill in some yellow back here I'll, I'll be ready to pick out my other colors do you remember what yellow is is it a warm or is it a cool color I think you're right. It's a warm color. Warm colors are the, the colors that you think about when you have a warm, sunny day at the beach. So we've got a warm, sunny wall back here to really brighten up the room and make it fun and cheerful. And I'm going to bring it all the way down to the line that is, um, shows me where I start my wall kind of like my horizon line, right? But it's my wall and floor line. So I've got that filled in. And I'm ready to move on to my next color. I'm ready to go on to my fish now. I think I'm going to go ahead and color my fish orange. I'm going to grab a crayon this time. And this, this artwork would be considered multimedia. Media refers to what you're using to add color to your artwork. That's your medium. And so more than one medium is media. Media is the plural of medium in art. So I've got one of my mediums I used for my background was the medium of colored pencil. And now I'm using the medium of crayon to add more color with my, uh, to my fish. So this is multi. Multi means more than one. And media for um, what I'm using to add color. So I'm going to go ahead also and add some water. And I know water is not usually green, but I really like the way that Matisse used uh, some different values of green in his water. The value refers to how light or how dark a color is. And I've got a couple of different values of green right here. I've got a light green 
This light green has also got a little more yellow in it. And I've got a darker green, a darker value of green. And it's fun to use different values of color to add interest to your artwork. Value is one of the elements of art, along with color, line, shape. We're talking about lots of different elements of art today. When we're looking at value, shape, we're talking about space, another element of art. When we talked about how the fish are overlapping and the leaves are overlapping. We're talking about a form also. The form that we're using here is the, um, the cylinder. That's a form. That's another el of our elements of art. So we can, we can talk about all the different elements even just by looking at one work of art. Another one of the elements is texture. And texture is how something feels or how it looks like it feels. Something can have a rough texture, a smooth texture, a bumpy texture. It's fun to add different textures in your artwork. And the, the Impressionists and the Fauvists added lots of texture. Now, remember that Matisse is um, famous for Fauvism. And uh, Fauve means wild beast. Right? So he was a wild beast. I'm switching back over to color pencil while I'm using green. I'm just going to go ahead and do lots of greens. I'm doing the, my green leaves, the green in my water. There are lots of different ways that I can use green in this artwork. Matisse uses a lot of green in this one too. I'm not copying everything he does though. I'm doing, I'm using Matisse as my inspiration. If I made mine exactly like his and you made yours exactly like mine, that would be boring, wouldn't it? If art was always the same just because we're using someone's artwork for our inspiration, that means that they're just inspiring us to do our own thing. So, I'm going to add lots of pretty green leaves. And I'm going to add some texture, too. I'm going to add some texture lines in just a minute. You know what? Sometimes the leaves are not always green, though. Sometimes they have some yellow or red, orange. The leaves turn all different colors. And um, some artists also love to show different stages of um, when the leaves are starting to die. Some of the leaves might even be turning brown and ready to fall off, or just about ready to fall off. So you can also do that. I'm gonna pick up another green. This is a darker green I'm gonna use to outline. Now, um, sometimes we use black to outline and that really helps to make our colors pop. Another way to use to create contrast in your artwork and really make your colors pop is by using a darker value of a color. In this case, I'm using a darker value of green to really make my green uh, leaves pop and stand out and to keep my design because contrast is one of our elements of design in art. I'm going to add maybe a few, um, a few lines of um, the, the veins of the leaf. The leaves, right? Leaves have veins coming down the middle, going out to the sides. So 
it's fun to add those as well in some, in some of your art. Keep those veins in there. That's how the leaves get some of their nutrients and water throughout the plant. Just have some fun with it. You know what, if you go out of the lines, it's no big deal. Just make that your new line. Make it a happy accident. All right? You can have some fun and actually be happier with something that you think, oh, don't, don't think, oh no, I messed it up. Nope, you didn't mess it up. It's, it can be a happy accident. It can be something new, something fun and different in your artwork. with a nice dark value of green. Okay. So now you can um, you can finish by outline if you want to outline your um, your cylinder. It's a good time to do that as well. On each one of those lines if you're not happy with any of the sketching you did earlier now's the time to kind of just make yourself happier with it okay so that's that much of it so let's keep going I think what I'm going to do next is look at my artwork and think about complementary colors again remember we talked about purple and yellow being complementary and um, green and red being complementary now I'm going I think I'm going to use a red to color the vases here that my plants are in. Maybe around the top edge too. I might put some brown dirt in there later. Just put some red vases. And then I might just use a kind of a very dark, um, almost a burgundy. Burgundy is like a combination of red and black. Um, it's a darker value of red. Just to color my table, just to give it a little bit more contrast because I've got this very light green. And I think if I just use this uh, dark value of red, I might do that. But I want you to pick out the colors that you like, some colors that you think would be fun and pretty in your artwork. You might not want to use complementary colors, but you might want to use warm colors next to cool colors to keep that good contrast, like Matisse. You might want to use colors that are more similar and you might want to just make your your uh, get, get your contrast by using different values of color. So I've got my got my tabletop done. Now I think I'm going to go ahead and color my my legs. Now I want you to notice I did not change my colored pencil to a different one. I'm just pressing down a little bit harder here. That's a cool thing about using colored pencils and crayons. You can press down a little bit harder and get a darker value of color. So that's um, 
That's a fun way to add contrast, an easy way to add contrast to your artwork. Now I'm also going to go ahead and outline that table. By pressing down a little bit harder. While I've got this dark red, I think I'm going to go ahead and use it to outline my goldfish. Sometimes by using an analogous color to outline, you can really add some nice detail to your artwork. An analogous color is a color that is next to a color on the color wheel. So if I get my color wheel and I look here, I have orange and then next to my orange I have red. I've got analogous colors right here that are um, very close to each other on the color wheel right beside each other. Here's a, here's kind of a um, red violet, red, red orange, or orange red and orange. So I've got that outline done there. So now I'm going to decide on my colors up here. Do you remember what the complementary color for yellow is? I think you got it. It is purple. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to use some purple on my flowers. Now again, I don't have to use uh, complementary colors. I can use any color really. But complementary makes a nice contrast. So what I might do is use some other cool colors. So red, uh, yellow is a warm color. If I want to use another cool color, I might use blue, right? The cool, like the cool blue water. If I use cool blue and cool violet. And then I've got the cool green on my leaves already. So I've got a lot of cool colors next to my warm um, yellow. Let's see. Maybe I'll use this darker blue for this flower. Just for something different. Then I'm going to use just a kind of a golden yellow center here for my flowers. So now I need a color for my circles. I think I might use an analogous red or red actually red is um, another warm color like yellow but it's a much darker value it's I guess red is not analogous red is just a darker value of um, a warm color that will also give good contrast here and up here near the um, greens so it makes a nice contrast. Just go around and around and fill it in. But again, you use the colors you like. Any color can work.
Matisse had a lot of fabric in his studio that he would look at to get ideas for color combinations and patterns for his artwork. And he said his fabrics, his patterned fabrics that he uses used for inspiration were an essential part of his studio. When he moved to a new studio, those rolls of fabrics went with him. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna lock up this red. I'm just gonna go ahead and put the line for the floor there. And I noticed that Matisse used, um, used black on his floor. Now, why do you think he would use black when the, the bright fun colors were so important to him? Well, black is always a good contrast color, and black makes the other colors pop. So I'm going to use black, too. I'm going to get a black. And you can use um, whatever color you like. You might want a wood floor with some brown. Dark brown is also a good contrast color. That's a neutral color. Black is considered a neutral. It's not a warm or cool color like the colors on the color wheel. Right, white is another neutral color. And a nice neutral tan. So you can have some fun with neutrals, but the black will really make the colors pop. I like the way black makes a great contrast color. One of the other things we like to think about when creating a work of art is Balance. Balance is another one of the principles of design. When we're thinking about balance in art, it doesn't mean that things have to be exactly the same on both sides. Like symmetrical is when they're exactly the same. And when we first started out our artwork today, when we had just our cylinder and our table. Everything was the same on both sides. It was symmetrical. But then we started adding different things on different sides. Symmetrical means that there's a line of symmetry down the middle and everything on each side of that line of symmetry is the same. It's like a reflection across that line. Like if you took a mirror would be the same on both sides. And we can see the cylinders the same, the tables the same, the legs of the table are the same. But once I started adding other things, different things on each side, like heart-shaped leaves on one side and teardrop-shaped leaves on the other, then my artwork still had balance, but it was not symmetrical balance, it was asymmetrical balance. And when I'm talking about asymmetrical balance, it means that things are not the same on both sides. In this case, A means not. It's a prefix that means not. Can you think of some other prefixes that mean not? You might think of un or dis. Like if I don't like something, I would dislike it, right? So, and if you, um, if you don't, if you're not tying your shoes, you untie your shoes. Asymmetrical is like that. Asymmetrical is not symmetrical. It's not the same, but it's still, in our case, it's still balanced. We have asymmetrical balance. 
so we feel a sense of, um, of balance that there's something on both sides. It might not be the same, but it gives the same weight to both sides of our artwork. So, almost got all this done here. I hope that you're almost done with yours too and you're happy with it. I'm gonna make the uh, black under the table even a little darker because I like that dark um, the shade under the table, the shadow under the table. Here. And if you want to, you can do some outlining as well with your black. to really make them pop down here. You can put a little black dot for the eyes of your fish if you want to or anything else. The other thing I needed was just a little bit of brown dirt in my pots. detail with my brown just to add a little more contrast with some spots. So I think I'm happy with that. Now that you're finished with your Matisse inspired artwork, I hope you'll take a picture and leave it in a comment below. And I hope you'll subscribe below so that you'll know whenever I put up a new art video. Have a wonderful time creating artists, and I look forward to seeing you next time.